Welcome to today's video guys. Another day, another 200 orders to drop off at the post office. But the best thing about these 200 orders is that these are the final orders that needed to be dropped off. Which means you guys are finally going to start getting all of your orders and I couldn't be more happier about that. It has been so stressful sorting out all the delays and all of the backlog and the issues and stuff with JP Post here in Japan. It's been insane and it was something that I just could not have anticipated whatsoever how hard the pandemic has essentially shut down Japan's owned postal system. JP Post, I'm not talking about any services like DHL, UPS or anything like that, but literally JP Post has been, it's it's insane. All the airmail services were suspended and stuff and they're even saying that airmail services to the US could be suspended until 2021 at this rate. So it's it's been hectic dealing with all that and trying to get all of these orders out and finally it's done, this is the last one. So I'm gonna drop these off now, and for anyone wanting any more updates on like ETAs and stuff like that, please go follow me on Twitter. Um, that's where I post all those kinds of updates and stuff, and if you just scroll through my feed, you'll see me updating everyone on everything there. Just because there's so much to talk about with all the updates, it would just be like a 10 minute video in itself. So that aside, check out my Twitter, and if you want any updates and stuff like that, as well as on the online store, we have an updated uh, message on the on every single page that explains the current situation and ETAs and whatnot. Go look at that. But speaking of the online store and merch, I have an all new drop set up ready for mid-September. It is the biggest drop I have ever done. I've never made this many shirts before um, of different designs and stuff. I am super excited and I think you guys are gonna really love some of the stuff that's coming. So get ready for that. Mid-September is when that drop's gonna drop and it's, it's gonna be big. Get excited. I'm excited. I'm also nervous because I've never done anything this big before with the merch store. So um, I hope you guys are excited. Anyways, that aside, let's go and drop this all off. Then we need to stop at the Nissan parts store because I had to order a part that broke on this thing. <laughs> so let's do that. Just finished dropping off all the packages at the post office and I'm heading to the Nissan parts center. So what happened was um, on my way home yesterday, I started noticing the car was losing power. And then just like whenever I'd get on boost, it wasn't really boosting as hard and uh, I guess as fast as it used to. And I could hear a whole bunch of air kind of like escaping on this side of the engine bay. Now, I straight away was like, oh, it's got a boost leak or something. And I was obviously in the middle of like a five hour drive. There's no point. I've got the Link ECU, which uses a map sensor, not a MAF sensor. So there's no problem. It doesn't affect my AFRs or anything like that. And I just kind of cruised all the way home. When I checked, where the boost leak was, it was the hose that comes off the idle air control valve that goes and connects to the J-pipe. So on my way home yesterday, I was actually going past the Nissan parts set, I pulled in there and ordered it. This is one expensive hose, by the way. It's like a $37 hose. But once we get there, I'll show you it and uh, we'll quickly switch it out and this thing will be making boost all over again. And if we get on a straight road where there's no traffic, I'll boost it in like first gear or something so you can hear all the air going on this side of the engine bay. It's kind of funny. So hopefully you can hear this. See how it's just all blowing out there. You can hear the boost literally leaving the intake system there. At the Nissan parts center, got my hose. And I have to say this has probably been sitting on the shelf for a while. Look how faded that sticker has gotten. Anyways, apparently it's just called a hose air. <laughs> So this is the ICV like uh, hose where it sucks air out of the intake system or the charge piping, the J pipe that goes across the engine bay and the RBs. If I had a forward facing plenum on this, I wouldn't probably need this, but your boy's lazy and doesn't want to put a forward facing plenum on it until he rebuilds the engine. So um, for now, this is, this is what I'm putting on there and I'm going to put some heat shielding on it as well so that it doesn't happen again because it goes right over the exhaust manifold and that's why it got so hot. It's split open, I believe, from the extra boost. So I'm going to go home and put this in and then go do some boosting. So I got home a while ago and I switched out and put the new hose on here. This is the hose I was talking about that goes over the exhaust manifold then goes into the IACV valve there. Um, and this is the old hose here where you can see it just got destroyed from the heat there. See how it all started cracking and stuff like that and then split open from the boost. So that was my big boost leak there. 
and why I wasn't making any boost. It really seems like lately, all I've literally been fixing on this car are boost leaks and vacuum leaks, um, which I'm not really surprised about. This car is really getting up there in age and rubber uh, always deteriorates as things heat up, cool down, heat up, cool down, heat up, cool down. That's just what happens. Uh, you can see though, I've obviously got that fire shielding and heat proofing sleeve over that hose there now so shouldn't be a problem with that in the future moving forward but also it's only a matter of time before this whole thing comes out and gets rebuilt once again i'm still chasing my tail about where this thing is using oil i just took the whole catch can out and drained it and out of like the three years i've had that catch can this is all the oil that was in there, a bit of moisture, water, and that's it. So like my car's never really had that much blow by. It's a pretty healthy motor compression wise. Um, but this thing is using oil. There's no leaks on the car and I have no idea where. I checked the oil today and this is literally where it's at. That's it. Just that little bit there on the dipstick. It's on the L. So I need to top it up again. It's used so much freaking oil. I have no idea where it's going. Um, the thing isn't smoking. Uh, I don't know. It's driving me insane, but I'm just going to keep topping it up and driving it for now. Uh, once I get my shop, motor's coming out. It's time for this thing to get rebuilt. But, um, yeah. Fun times. RBs, man. So before we go and do some testing, road tuning, and start boosting this thing, I figured since I just fixed a boost leak, we might as well do another boost leak test and make sure there's no other vacuum leaks or boost leaks anywhere on this thing because I'm sick and tired of fixing boost leaks and vacuum leaks on this thing. So I'm gonna let this thing get up to 10 PSI, start spraying the soapy water everywhere, and we should be ready. I'm, I'm pretty confident there's no leaks here, but I mean, we may also find something new. It'll probably be easy to fix and we'll move on from there, but I'll let you guys know. So I moved locations to somewhere where I can rev and not upset the Karens in my neighborhood. And the good news is, is after my boost leak test, I found no boost leaks whatsoever. So I started getting back into street tuning the car and working on the idle and the hunting issue. Now, I have this perfect right now, literally perfect. It has never idled this good ever. And it took a little bit of going backwards and forwards and getting the set screw perfect on the, um, the idle air control valve and making sure that the fuel and everything for the idle mapping was correct. Now, if this automatically changes again by itself and gets too rich or anything, then we've narrowed it down. It's gotta be the injectors. Um, now, I've been going backwards and forwards with Darren and we've been looking at this for a very long time trying to troubleshoot the issue. And now that I'm 100% sure, no vacuum leaks, no boost leaks and all that kind of stuff, and that's all ruled out. And I've just set and reset everything with the idle control valve. If it starts hunting again now, after I go for a little drive around and come back, it's most likely the injectors, um, which is something that Darren has seen before, especially with the Nismo Tome HKS 740cc side feed injectors. Um, sometimes you do get a few bad ones, which is why you always need to make sure you get your injectors flowed and matched up. Um, now in Japan, flow testing and all that kind of stuff isn't really super common not many workshops even do that over here so i'm actually looking at just buying a cheap one of those machines from like china or something um and and getting one myself but i'm having a lot of difficulty finding like the special tester fuel rail for the side feed injectors because i'd love to flow test these and clean them and try to rule that out because if we flow test these and like they're not flowing right what that means is some cylinders could be running leaner or richer than the others, which is obviously going to, could cause detonation issues in certain cylinders, which can lead to rod knock and all these other problems. You know, I have, an, I have a wide bend sensor in the exhaust at the back of the turbo, but I don't have a sensor on every single cylinder, like a heat sensor. So I can't do um, fuel injector trimming table stuff, right? Now that's like super advanced and normally those kinds of things are in like really expensive builds like time attack builds and stuff like that and crazy drift cars for FD. Um, I don't have that right on this, obviously. So with what I've got, sure my AFRs are looking perfect, but we could be, that's just an overall of all six cylinders together. And that could be very, very different per each cylinder if one injector is spraying more than the other and vice versa. 
So I'm just going through right now and trying to see if I have any control over the AC fan because I want the AC fan to turn on um, when like the engine gets a little bit warmer and stuff like that because right now it only comes on with the AC. So I was just seeing if the Link ECU has that controllability. Uh, it does, but the way that Nissan wired in this fan is it comes off a little like sensor um, with the AC control unit through the dash. So I'm gonna have to kind of splice in and tap in to the relay here to a wire into the Link ECU so that the Link ECU actually will solely control that fan. And what I'll do is the Link ECU will automatically turn on that fan whenever I turn the AC on, um, just like it has been through the AC system, as well as the Link ECU will say, hey, I also want that fan to turn on when the engine temperature, water temperature is above 90 degrees Celsius. That'll just push a little bit more air through the radiator and help keep this thing a little bit cooler. So yeah, we're making, little by little, making improvements, getting this thing running better. Things are looking pretty good, and the best thing is, she making boost again, <laughs> spinning the wheels, jeez. So we're on the one gun, and things are going really well. Done a couple of pulls and data logged everything, so I got some data to send to Darren. But that all aside, uh, I figured since we're here, we might as well stop at Daikoku PA. That's like the best turnaround point. Look at this view, man. Crazy beautiful. I love Yokohama. Um, but yeah, we're going to Daikoku PA. We'll chill there for like maybe 30 minutes or so and see if any cool cars rock up. Man, look at that beautiful city view there. Ferris wheel and everything. I uh, can't see much. But yeah, uh, it's kind of early, so I don't know if anyone's going to be there. Everyone kind of finishes work, you know, like 7 p.m. here. So 6.30, eh, we'll see who's there. But for now, let's just get there. I'll go through some of the data logs. But it seems like since I've fixed all the boost leaks and stuff like that on this car, it's gotten so much more responsive now. Like I'm hitting one bar of boost, which is full boost for this thing, at literally 3200 RPM. That's so good. For a GTX 3071R low mount stock manifold, forward facing plenum with a whole bunch of piping going to the OEM intake manifold, that's super responsive. Probably the most responsive it's ever gonna get with this setup. So yeah, a few people have always messaged me and like, isn't a 3071 too big for a Skyline? I'm like, man, there are people running bolt on 3582Rs on these. <laughs> This is probably a little, with the 7172 7, rear housing, it's not choking it out too much, but there's probably still a bit of back pressure. But yeah, overall, we're pretty much at Daikoku. Let's come down the hill here and see what we've got. Ooh, I can eat ramen. Oh wait, hang on, no, May's making dinner for me tonight. I can't do that. Damn, a lot of trucks here tonight. Everybody waiting, sleeping, catching up on sleep before they go to drive. Okay, it's pretty much barren, man. It's empty. There's a few cool cars there. Oh, it's an FD. We'll go walk around, see what's here. So we are getting a little bit of idle hunting now, like a small amount. And I can see that my AFRs have changed a fair bit. And this, yeah, it's starting to really look like it's my injectors at fault here. There's some kind of issue with them um, because like you do a couple of pulls and then it like changes again. You do another couple pulls and changes again. It's it's really bizarre. I'm also wondering if whatever is consuming my engine oil may also have something to do with this and my AFRs at idle. Um, but it seems like all the data I'm looking at, it's more likely to be uh, injector related. So I think my game plan with this is, I'm going to just put up with this until I rebuild the car. You guys know I have big plans. We've got that big Garrett G3770 at home that needs to somehow make its way on the skyline. I am planning to completely rip out this engine and do something different and, and all that kind of stuff. We're still going with the RB route, but we're going to make things spicy. Um, but yeah, like you, you can hear it hunting in the background right now. It's, it's definitely got an issue. I don't know if it's injectors. There's something funky going on with my valve stem seals. Uh, which is kind of bizarre because you would normally see smoke and stuff coming out the back I don't know man. I don't know where my oil is going. It's I think I've cracked a ring land It's a very common issue with RVs especially like I've been abusing this 25 
for like three to four years now. When I first got my tune and stuff done on it here in Japan, um, the initial tune on it was not good. And we could have done some damage to the rings or the, um, the ring lens then. I don't know. But pretty much I've been chasing my tail ever since then. Uh, trying to find these little issues and stuff like that and oil consumption has just been getting more and more and more So I think it's fair to say but it's we you know, I'm doing a compression test Compression test checks out 155 on all six cylinders, which is really healthy. That could be because there's oil in there That's sealing the rings uh, When I'm doing my compression test, but I don't know um, So yeah, this, that's probably what's going on. I suspect so I'm just gonna keep running it as is for now um, we'll put up with it might still do a couple drift events with her um, I don't like there's nothing severely wrong with it but uh, it's just using a bit of oil so I mean it's probably wiser to not go do some drift events but we'll get these these pools checked out by by Darren and uh, as long as everything's okay there I might do a couple more events in it and uh, once I get my shop hopefully next month things going on jack stands and we're pulling the engine it's it's enough she's she needs to be overhauled and rebuilt i think that's just a fact i think like having a stock motor making the amount of boost that i'm putting into it which is about 16 17 psi daily daily driven as well as how many events was i hitting in this thing at least one to two a month of non-stop hot lapping this thing pretty reliable for the last and it's been like nearly four years now so I think that's pretty pretty decent run for a stock RB25 haven't done head gasket haven't done studs hence while I'm only running one bar of boost um, and a bunch of safety features on the link enabled but yeah I think we had a good run I yeah it's a bit sad but I think she's she's a bit worn internally now so just going through the log from one of the pulls here, um, I can we ramped in at about tw like 2,000 RPM, um, and we can see that we hit full boost at roughly like one bar here, and it kind of fluctuates a little bit here just while the boost controller is doing its thing and the duty cycle table, and then we kind of start to level out. We see a little bit of boost creep happening here, and we're hitting about 1.1 bar, which is fine. That's safe. Internal wastegate problems that you're always going to see a bit of boost creep. Um, but the best thing is, is our AFRs pretty much stay right on around 11, 11.8, 11.9. There are a few cases here where it kind of, you know, gets a little bit like 11.3, uh, 11.4, 11 11.5, which is around the 4,000 RPM mark. Um, so Darren will adjust that and get that a little bit higher. If we can get that closer to 12, you'll actually notice a little bit more power gain there. Um, but otherwise looks really good um, my knock sensor and knock control here looks really really good doesn't look like there was any big events or anything like that that would indicate detonation so that's exciting to see pretty much stable across the board there down there which is great um, but yeah pretty pretty hyped about this hey it looks really good even though this thing she's a little bit worn out right now <laughs> so enough tuning stuff for today let's do a quick walk and see what's here there's a few cool cars here a70 Supra, ooh, really clean blue RX-8 there. BMW, the station wagon's actually kind of nice. 530i, wheels are good. Yokohama Advent RS's. This A70 is pretty clean. <laughs> He's literally sticker bombed one of his lights. That's pretty cool. Moving along here, what is this thing, a little Mazda? Yep. Man, nothing safe. Looks like we got a nice starlet there, with what looked like uh, Yokohama Advent RGDs? No. These are the old school Graham lights. You're right, the Ds have an extra spoke, my bad. Carbon fiber hood, it's pretty cool. Another starlet, another starlet, RPF ones, <laughs> nice, another starlet, jeez this one's actually kind of cool, I dig this one a lot, huh, just give me bad ideas, bad ideas boys, or good ideas, alright no, 
we don't need any more cars right now yeah these are these are rgds these are like twos or threes though they're the new ones way different extra spoke i can't believe i got that mixed up still really nice fds man they're such a cool looking car a little bit of wing game aggressive front fenders and then over here we got a 300 zx z32 on um 33 gtr wheels they really are a nice wheel a bunch of people res recently have been dming me saying they haven't seen many z32s or z31s on the channel before i don't know maybe they just haven't been watching many videos but we see them a fair bit got a new sdi 86 mini this looks like a supercharged model uh, i think that kind of mu pretty much sums up tonight like there's a few other little like k cars and stuff like that up at there and yeah there's not really anything more of interest for me a little porsche just rocked up another 86 i think there uh, might be another a70 super up here actually let's go for a quick walk and see next to this 86 here the rear end kind of looks like one let's see that's gonna be pretty cool if there's two here tonight I don't know though. That wing looks more like an FD. Yeah, it is an FD. <laughs> Threw me off from the rear. This one's pretty cool. Carbon fiber uh, hood, super aggressive front fenders as well as rears on this. Wing, wing game's pretty cool too. Not too bad. That's pretty much it right now. Here's the front of that BMW station wagon. Like the TEs on the uh, RX-8, not too bad. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Wait, is that a Dodge? <laughs> Still blows my mind every time I see an American car here. They're really starting to get popular. All the young rich kids are buying them. All right, well that pretty much sums up Daikoku PA right now. I mean, it's what I expected. It's a Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. Well, it's like 7 p.m. now. I need to head home, May's gonna make me dinner. But before I head home, I think we need to go to the vending machine. We need to deliver an ASMR coffee time to you lads. Well guys, decided to go with the Emerald Mountain Blend today. Listen closely. Here's to the skyline, to what she was, what she's not now, and what she will become, because she will come back and she will be better than ever. Just need that shop got to start tearing her down that's two cars i got to tear down now the skyline and the evo i'm going to try and time it all right so we can kind of like while well, we've got downtime with the evo we got the skyline and vice versa when we got downtime with the skyline we got the evo to work on we'll time it all right but yeah i think it's pretty safe to say she's a bit hurt inside which sucks I've ruled out everything else. I know we've got that issue with those injectors, but the oil consumption thing, there's only one thing it can be. You guys know. You know what? Just because she's a little bit hurt doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of fun, right boys? <laughs> That's probably why she's hurt to begin with. <laughs> oh man. She's gonna come back better than ever, I promise you guys. I just got home and I'm in the merch room and I'm just going through looking at all of the stock left over from the previous drop and I want to try and clear some of this out for what's coming. As you guys know, I've talked about this a bit, but we have a huge drop coming, whole bunch of new shirt designs and stuff like that. But that aside, I want to do these sticker packs. We're going to do a special on a sale on the online store, semit.net, and you'll be able to get the S15, the Ichigozaku sticker pack. Every pack comes with these four stickers. We've got the Florida Miata one. These, there's not too many of these left, so these will probably go soon. Um, but these packs will be on the online store at a much discounted price to what they previously were. So if you guys want some Samet stickers, go get them while you still can. Um, we'll still have like some of the little Miata ones up. As you can see, there's not many left, um, but I wanna clear them out. I also found some of these. These are some really OG ones. There's only two left of those and one of these. So these will be up there. And this is all we have 
stock wise of the Ichigo Zoku shirts. Um, so if you want to snap one of these, you still can. Man, you've walked in at the perfect time. Can you help me unfold this? This is seriously my favorite design ever of the S15. Like we did this graphic and hold that up for everyone. Look how good that looks on the back of the shirt. Isn't that sick? I love it. So yeah, this is literally all we have left. So limited stock, grab yourself some while you still can and these sticker packs will be up there at a special price. So where does everyone go to get merch made? www.lzmfg oh no. Where does everyone really go to get merch? <laughs> you won't give up on that. Oh, sorry. www.samit.net and get your favorite stickers. All right, cool. Not just stickers, but shirts. We have a really cool drop coming. You know the shirts. You've seen the yes. designs. Are you excited? Yeah, really cool. Are you excited? Are you going to wear some? You going to do some modeling pictures for me? No. Okay, thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, perfect timing that you walked in because I do have some bad news. What do you mean bad news? The skyline's broken. She's hurt internally. Internal. Like internal bleeding. Internal, internal? Yeah, like internal bleeding. Like, needs a heart transplant. Heart? Yeah. It's pretty bad. The engine? Yeah. So it's probably rings or, or ring lands. But I mean, I kind of expected this for a while and it's kind of coming at a good time because you, get, you know my plans that these guys don't know yet. So yeah. it's just going to motivate me to get it done faster. Yeah. I mean, we were planning to rebuild the skyline at the start of this year, but COVID happened. So I mean, that put a hold on everything. Yeah, still. You sad? Well, did we ever name the skyline? I don't yeah. think we did. We did. We didn't go we down, right? Bingo. Yeah, we for red apple. We never ever called, we it, never, ever called it that again. <laughs> Just been calling it the skyline. But yeah, unfortunately, the skyline, she's hurt. But we're going to make a better than ever and extra spicy. Like a hot chili con carne. Wait, I just thought about the after effect of that. Well, that's not what I want. <laughs> All right, I'm a mess. What do you mean? Like all the farts coming out? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to end the video here, guys. I, this video has kind of been a slice of life, plus just diagnosing a bunch of stuff on the skyline, a bunch of bad news as well. But it couldn't have come at a better time. And if everything plans out this week, at the end of this week, I'm looking at a bunch of shops with my friend. And if things go well, we could have a shop in the next few weeks. Fingers crossed, because if that happens, then we can start on just, just dismantling the Evo. We can start dismantling the Skyline. Um, but I need to time things right, like I said, so that when I've got dead time with one, I can work on the other. So I've got to try and be very, very smart with that. Maybe we'll buy another project car. I don't know. What do you think, babe? Do we need another car? Yes. RX-8, right? I was thinking of getting an RX-8. We'll pull the rotary out of it, because I've always wanted to do an EV conversion. Electronic vehicle? We'll turn no, it into I a know. Tesla. No. I've seen so many YouTubes. We just no. fill it with batteries. Why do you and... take the rotary out? Well, you want to take the rotary out for an SR. Yeah, but not for an EV. You know what's funny? You probably get more kilometers with an EV RX-8 than the actual original Renaissance engine that's in there before it blows up. All right, I'm ranting. Thanks for watching this video. Smash that like button, write us a comment, subscribe. Make sure you go get yourself some cement merch. I want to clear all this stuff out and I will see you all in tomorrow's video. Peace out. Jamata.